Paramount Pictures is currently filming a major motion picture in North Georgia called Very Interesting Things, which you'll see once you check out that movie. We generally work on a few different types of projects. Obviously, we do a lot of short films. Michael, how did you get started in filmmaking? It's um, a very large part of the success of any project. Um, and I started my filmmaking career actually on a cruise ship making short films. Wow. I'm the executive producer to our new feature film, um, The Calm Denominator. Tell us a little bit about your character in the film. She's really upset um, from the beginning, from the get -go. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Well, basically, I, um, I somehow started acting in uh, 1990. Hi, I'm here with Dushan Bullock who is the director of the upcoming film, Gangsta Gangster. Thank you for coming, welcome. Thank you for having me. Um, first, I wanna talk about your experiences in the music industry, because this kind of led you into doing filmmaking, right? Yes. So talk first about your experiences in the music industry. Okay, well, uh, I started producing roughly around 1995, 1996, uh, I was just purely in the music production, uh, you know, started learning uh, live instruments or whatnot. And in 1999, uh, I got with this local rap label in Savannah, Georgia, and mm -hmm. uh, we produced uh, an album with a group called Crime Affiliates. Mm -hmm. uh, it, charted, it charted Billboard, and we had a distributor, and we sold 50,000 units uh, in, uh, with that uh, independence distributor. but. Uh, when, if people people who uh, have experience with independent distributors, they understand that the money is kind of funny. <laughs> so uh, we eventually got another distributor in 2000, and one of the members of the group, uh, his name was Camouflage. He broke off and did a solo album, mm -hmm. and uh, his album was successful. And we did like an, around 60 or 70 thousand units with his independently, but we had a bad distributor then. Mm -hmm. So Universal Records picked up his 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 uh, second solo album. Mm -hmm. And I was the A and R for that album. What is now? I saw that on your bio. What is an A and R for those artists, people who don't know? Okay, A and R is artists and repertoire, and basically, I was responsible for uh, helping to groom and guide the artists okay. throughout that the, the process of making sure that that album it has some type of successful, okay, you know, uh, process, successful track or whatnot. Okay, so like yeah. a babysitter. <laughs> Well, you know what, I used to call myself that, and uh, he used to get mad, but uh, I was in a sense like a babysitter because I had to cater to him, uh -huh. you know, I didn't have to feed him or burp him, that, but yeah, I had to keep him clean, you know, I had to right. definitely try to direct him, and okay. uh, you know, I, and I also produced a third of the album, the album had about 20 songs, and I produced seven, seven of the songs, so that was a great experience. Um, but that's what eventually led me into filmmaking. And I did like two more albums with Camouflage, but we did that, uh, the one with Universal Records in 2001. And that's when I wanted to take my, 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 my entertainment career to the next level. So that's inspired you to go into filmmaking, how? Because you wanted to do First what? it started with the music videos, because when I was in A&R oh, for that okay. project, I, um, I had to pick all of the, the directors for the music videos that we shot. Okay. And the first director that I picked, that I worked with, was Brian Barber, who I just did Idlewild or whatnot, big up to Brian. Um, he's a real, real, real cool guy. And working with him, he kind of took me up on this wing, uh -huh. and I just fell in love with the music video experience. I was like, wow, I'm enjoying oh, this. Okay. Because I was always producing music, mm -hmm. and uh, then watching people take that, that, that audio and turn it into a visual component, I just found that to be marvelous. So I went on to film school after that. I was okay. like, this is something that I need to do. And also, we were paying so much money for music videos, I was like, wow, you know, I could learn this skill and probably yeah. cut down on, you know, on like a great deal of the cost, and that's what happened. Okay. Yeah. So how did you end up going into feature films? Well, uh, when I got to film school, uh, in film school you have to shoot a lot of short films. Right. And like they always say, if you could tell a story in eight minutes, then you can tell one in 80 minutes. And I, I've shot like over 20 short films. I've had pretty good success with that mm -hmm. in the, um, in the uh, 
was the, the uh, film festival circuit. Oh, okay. I've had you know success in that aspect. I've also done a documentary as well, and um, I had success with that in terms of um, on, on you know selling it. But okay. uh, I said, well, I want to try my hand at this feature because I've been able to shoot a lot of shorts, and the way I approached it, I said, well. A feature film is just a culmination of a bunch of short films, mm -hmm. you know, because you've got so many different stories, you got allegories within the story. So I said, well, what I'll do is I'll just approach it as shooting a bunch of short, different short films because I'm accustomed to doing that. And I really had this story on my mind for like two years mm -hmm. that I wanted to shoot the story against the gangster. I just really wanted to shoot it. And I, it had another name at first, mm -hmm. but it, that name came about because that was like a pretty common theme. Mm -hmm. in the hip-hop era back in like the early 90s mm -hmm. with our N.W.A. and that's what spawned the name Gangsta Gangsta. I remember that. You remember that, huh? Not, I'm not as young as I look. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, mm -hmm. I remember. So, okay, tell us about the movie Gangsta Gangsta. Okay, uh, basically Gangsta Gangsta is a film that highlights the self-destructive nature of the African-American male in the hood and how that self-destructive nature just trickles down and impacts everyone Mm -hmm. that that individual is connected to negatively. Mm -hmm. So the, the lead character's name is Mac, and I did the Spike Lee thing. I'm actually mm -hmm. starring in the film as well. And the lead character's name is Mac, and Mac... You're the lead character? Yes. Okay. And Mac is the type of individual, he's very selfish. He has like a typical background, and I hate to say it like that, but it's true. Mm -hmm. uh, he has a girlfriend, has the baby mama. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happens is, you get to see how everybody who he's connected to is impacted because all Mac wants to do is live for himself. You know, he has a child, he hardly ever spends time with his child, mm -hmm. and eventually you'll see that that child will probably start picking up some of those habits. Mm -hmm. And it'll, it, it'll, it'll become a, a thing where he's sending those negative messages right. and sending that, uh, it's, it's almost like the child will be inheriting that negative uh -huh. lifestyle. But uh, Mac has a lot of other friends in the movie who are, who are, in a sense, bad influences because in the beginning of the movie, Mac is just working. He, he got out of the street lifestyle. One of his uh, close friends, who he used to do a lot of things with in the streets, prior to him going, his friend going to jail, gets out of jail and pulls him back into that life. Uh -huh. So it just, and, and then they start turning on each other. And then you just see this big, melting pot of corruption that exists right now in the hood because it's, it's, it's like with Mac, his mentality is, I want to do right, but the opportunities aren't there for me to make the money I want to make. See, I'm not going to work I for a little bit. right money. thing. Right. And it's like the microwave generation, I mean, the microwave mentality that this, the generation beneath me has. Mm -hmm. It's like, I just want it now. I don't want right. to work for it. You know, I want it right now. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's my generation. Yeah, <laughs> don't want to work for anything. Don't want to work for anything, and it's, and 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 then it's, it becomes well. Since I'm not going to work for it, I'm going to take it. I'm going to get it how right. I want to get it. But I'm not going to work for it, and I'm going to get it some kind of way. And that's what I'm showing in this movie. There's a lot of, you know, taking going on. There's yeah. a lot of laziness. There's yeah. a lot of just not working for what you want. Mm -hmm. Just wanting it by tomorrow you know, poof. So what motivated you to talk about this topic and be a part of sending this message? If, what, if there's a message that you, is it, the, is it the kind of movie that you're trying to send a message or is it just trying to make people aware of what's going on? What motivated you to, to do this first? And then talk a little bit about what message you wanna, what, what sort of influence do you want to have with the movie? Okay, well, basically, I come from that background. Mm -hmm. You know, um, lived in the pro projects when you know I was a real, you know, as a youth mm -hmm. came up, and you know, my mom did the best she could mm -hmm. and moved moved us out of there, and then we moved, you know, to we we, we constantly moved to a better environment, you know, mm -hmm. depending on what my mom could afford, and so so all of my friends have been, you know, street guys, basically, mm -hmm. you know, who do their thing. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I never knock anybody for what they do. Right. But, like, I've always had friends, like, when I used to hang with my friends, 
they used to be like pushing me to go to college because that's my God-given gift. My God-given gift is my man. Right. I'm not a hustler. That's not me. I tell anybody that I'm not even ashamed. That's not my thing. Mm -hmm. but my God-given gift is my man, so that's the talent that I use. But my friends would always say, man, go to school, man. You're going to be the first one from our hood to get a degree, man. We really want you to go to school. And I would hang out with them and kind of be getting pulled into that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. They pushed me away because they didn't want me because they saw something in me. They saw, they saw the potential that I had, mm -hmm. even when I didn't see it. So... I just felt as though in, in the Savannah community, Savannah, Georgia, that's where I'm from, that community is really near and dear to me because I was able to, you know, to educate myself. A lot of opportunities, you know, came about from Savannah. They supported my music career. So I just felt like I had to give back. And the movie uses a lot of uh, actors from that area mm -hmm. who just haven't had the opportunity to get out and, and find work because Hollywood, Hollywood is all the right. way across the right. nation, all the way across the coast. So. Uh, you know, the, the movie provides a lot of Savannah natives the opportunity to work. And although it is uh, an urban film, mm -hmm. but the message that I'm, trying to, that, that I'm trying to promote is you need to think about the consequences of your actions. Mm -hmm. Because the film, the ending of the film is like a double negative. And we see everybody just getting destroyed in this film. You know, there's so much destruction going to take mm -hmm. place, and the consequences of your actions are going to eventually have to be experienced. You're going to have to deal with them. Right. You know, you, you're enjoying the good times now, but once you have to, you know, answer to those right. consequences, right. you know, a lot of young brothers be like, dog, man, I wish, because I, I go talk to a lot of young brothers in the prison system, and they all say, man, if I had to do it over again, I wouldn't do it. Right. That's what I hear all the time. Right. But you got to think about that beforehand and say, well, I don't need to do it. And right. I don't need to do things so, you know, with such a stupid mentality and stupid right. approach. So. so you have some solutions for us in this, I have in this film. I have some solutions. And some of the solutions I, weren't, I, I wasn't able to, like, exacerbate or bring out as much as I want. Mm -hmm. my, my major solution, especially in Savannah, is provide more opportunities that are lucrative for African Americans and also something that they would want to do mm -hmm. um, instead of uh, providing jails. You know, right now Savannah's trying to raise money to build jails. Right. And I don't, for the life of me, I don't understand that. You would rather lock a person up than give them the opportunity to be a productive member of society. And that's what discourages me about our system, the structural inequality that exists. It's, it's, it's just, it exists to keep us locked down, to mm -hmm. keep us trapped, instead of providing us with opportunities to be young filmmakers or, mm -hmm. you know, even, even with science. You know, we, 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 might, we need some black, young black mathematicians, like just black mathematicians, period, mm -hmm. to help groom some of these younger individuals who are afraid of mathematics, are afraid of science because they feel like they can't get it, mm -hmm. but they don't have anyone to relay and convey the subject matter to them in a, mm -hmm. in a language that they understand. Mm -hmm. So we have all these different things that negatively impact the opportunities that are available for African Americans, and that's when they go to just doing other things because they don't have any hope. Mm -hmm. And fortunately for me, uh, you know, opportunities were available. Mm -hmm. You know, even though when I first when I first went to college, I wanted to be a filmmaker, mm -hmm. but my undergrad is in math. My master's is in film, mm -hmm. so I picked a degree that I, I saw as something to fall back on. But that wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do. Right. Right. You know, but that was my mentality. But everybody doesn't harbor that mentality, and they aren't expected to. A lot of times, people want to go to school and do what they want to do from Jump Street. If they if they want to be in the filmmaking. That's what they want to do off top. They don't want to have to take a fallback profession. Mm -hmm. And they shouldn't, they shouldn't be forced to. But I'm, you know, it's fortunate now that Savannah has an art school there that at least caters to a, a diverse, right. Um, right. You know, diverse disciplines. Right. Mm -hmm. OK. So what type of opportunities do you see in a place like Savannah or a place like Atlanta or any place else in the country? What kind of opportunities do you think would change the, the, the future. What type of opportunities need to be provided to change the course of these young people where they're going? I, I Are think, you talking about like educational opportunities? Yes. Or? 
I it, think you both. said I, one thing you said was in areas that they're interested in. So what type of things can you expand on that? Yeah, well, um, I want to talk about the academic area just briefly. Mm -hmm. I think that there needs to be some sort of peer tutoring and mentoring system set about while students are in the, the secondary phase of their schooling. Okay. Because that's, that's such a critical phase and that's where we, we start losing a lot of our, our, our scholars in, right. in high school because sometimes they may need some type of tutoring to just get them over that hump. They help them with standardized testing because I feel like standardized testing is so biased, and that's just another, uh, you know, another negative thing that we have as African Americans. Mm -hmm. But also just to help them academically in the classroom, mm -hmm. so that a student will understand that there isn't anything that they can't do. Right. You know, just a lot of students just really, j just mentally cut themselves down and say, well, I can't do it. I right. can't do calculus. I can't do algebra. Right. You know, the Egyptians created all of this mathematics. You can do it because your, your heritage created this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's in your bloodline to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. But also, um, you know, like I said, filmmaking, there were a lot of students that wanted to get into film production in Savannah. And over the past eight years, that has become a more available opportunity for students. Whereas before it wasn't, students had to either leave and go off to film school. Right. Some students weren't able to afford that. Right. You, you had so many different uh, things that just impacted right. that. Uh, we, got, we got a good fashion school down there, graphic, uh, right. graphic design, um, computer, computer arts, mm -hmm. gaming design. So you have so many different uh, disciplines now that you can go into. Right. It's up to you now to put, you know, to be self-motivated and say, all right, I'm going to go ahead and pursue this because it's right there. All I got to do is sit in the classroom, right. learn, learn whatever the teacher's facilitating to me, mm -hmm. and take it out into the world. Because a lot of times people just want a practical skill set. They want to be able to just go out in this workforce. They want to get that schooling and then go out in the workforce and make money. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think that's important to be able mm -hmm. to provide that opportunity to people. Right. Mm -hmm. So what would you, I would think that some students who go into the music industry would think that this is going to be another way for them to get quick money and be famous really fast or like I'm thinking of just anything related to entertainment, not just music but filmmaking and acting, that this is a quick way I'm going to be discovered and this is somebody gonna pick up my label or my record and this is what this is how it's gonna I'm gonna make money fast. What do you tell them to get them into what the reality of the situation is? I, I would have to tell them my story. Mm -hmm. for, because like I said, I started this in ninety five and that was about twelve years ago. Mm -hmm. And I mean that was when I bought my first drum machine sampler and you know didn't didn't he get an album that hit Billboard until 99, late 99. Mm -hmm. And still didn't make money until Universal Records, and that was 2001. Right. So you got to be able to go with the rigors of this industry. And it's, it's worse than it was when I was coming up because we got the bootlegging thing now. So okay. it's, and everybody is trying to be everybody. a rapper yeah. or a singer. Everybody is trying to now. And, and, and that's fine. If you believe in yourself, you know, go ahead and, and follow your dreams by all means. But because everybody's trying to do it, it's so oversaturated, you have to think of another way to get yourself out there. Okay. You know, and you got to be willing to, to just, you know, go through the, the waters, go through the mud, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of, there are a lot of trenches that you're going to have to go through. And, and my, my key thing that I would tell anyone is education is the key. Right. You know, I, again, I come from the streets, but I would not have been able to operate all that equipment if I didn't go get an education. Right. I would not have been able to edit this film and shoot this film if I didn't educate myself. So a lot of times, especially, especially African-American males, they become so, they have this, this patriotic sense of the streets that they just, they, it, it's dumb to be in school and it ain't cool and nah, that's the only way you're going to get ahead is to educate yourself or you're going to be spending a lot of money paying somebody who's educated and, know, and has the know-how mm -hmm. to help you get to where you want to get. So it's all about education. Mm -hmm. There's no other way that I can see. 
That's the only way that, uh, that has given me an edge over anyone else. Okay. Okay. Why don't you give us some contact information so we can see, find out more about the movie, find out more about you and your life. It's a okay. fascinating, when I read the bio, it was fascinating to me. So it's definitely something that our audience will be interested in. So give okay. us some contact information. Definitely give us a way to get get a hold, get our hands on this film. Okay, most definitely, because I want you to get it. I want everybody <laughs> to get it. All right, uh, my uh, MySpace address is myspace.com slash gangsta movie. Mm -hmm. And that's gangsta, G-A-N-G-S-T-A, M-O-V-I-E. And the trailer is on that uh, site as well as uh, you know, you can email me, contact me, leave comments or whatnot. And we also have production stills on the site as well. Uh, my number is 912-604-5663. And I can be contacted by the cell phone number. And you can, uh, if you don't get me, just leave a message re just regarding any information about the movie. Uh, the movie is scheduled to be, re be released uh, early April. Okay. So uh, okay. just be on the lookout for that. Okay. Yeah. And that's well, thank much you it. so much for coming. Thank you for having me. It's been All my right. pleasure. <laughs>